Hi guys, I'm Hendo. I'm a cosplayer. I do a few different characters, but the one that I get the most questions about is Spider-Gwen, who's also my favorite. So I'm going to film this tutorial just to show you guys how to sew a Spidey suit. It's the same principle whether you're doing Peter or May or Miles. Um, mine is for Gwen, so it's going to have a little less that's involved with the puff paint webbing, but it will have the extra bit about how to sew a hood. This is sort of a collection of a lot of stuff that I learned and a few things that I'm going to try this time around with this new suit. If some of you are wondering why I'm making this new suit, it's because my first print didn't come out quite right. It was a little bit green and it wasn't as deeply colored as I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be a little more saturated. Um, the print was also a little too small for me, so my current suit is super tight. It's pretty hard just to make this thwipping hand signal. Um, because there's so much tension on the entire suit. So since I'm not a super seasoned sewer, this is going to be a really basic video and my goal is to have it be really easy to understand for all beginners. I'm going to start from everything from like threading the sewing machine to, you know, threading the bobbin, um, sewing different kinds of stitches, what basting is, this is going to cover everything from the ground up, but I'll split it into parts so that those of you who only need a tutorial for certain parts of the outfit can just look for those and you don't have to sit through like an hour long of me babbling on about things you already know how to do. So the first thing that you're going to need is an image file for your pattern. I got mine from Gunhead Designs. Uh, it's really true to the comic. Um, it has a hex pattern, it has a muscle base, the colors I think look really good. It is because it's so true to the comic though, it doesn't have a lot of contour, so in real life that suit isn't very flattering on really anyone, I don't think. Uh, so when I got his design, I edited it in Photoshop and made it contour to my body a little more, along with resizing it. You can also get a print from Arachnid Studios, I think that's who RPC uses for Gwen, uh, and you can get one from Spiderbite Designs. I don't think either of them have the hex pattern, but they do have, um, I think, a more feminine muscle base, which is really nice, and it is contoured a little bit to make like your chest and butt more flattering. Um, so then you don't have to do any of the edits in Photoshop, and probably speeds up the process a little bit. When I was making my suit the first time, Gunhead was really the only one I think that had one ready, so that's why I bought Gunheads, but I definitely consider the other two now, because um, it's just a little different and it looks really good. The next thing you'll have to do is resize the image to fit your measurements. Um, the easiest way to do this is in Photoshop. You can download a demo. Um, I think they still have 30 day trials for Photoshop and you just open the TIFF image and you use these ruler tools and make sure that it fits your uh, sizing. There's always a guide that comes with it when you buy the image file that will tell you how to do the resizing. If you guys think that you need an extra tutorial just for that step, let me know, um, but I think it's pretty self-explanatory. The next step is to Google any fabric printing service. I would definitely look at a few and try and find one that's close to you if possible. If you can visit in person, that would be amazing. It's also a good idea to just call and ask to see if they have any experience printing superhero costumes. I chose Fabric on Demand, which is located in San Francisco. And they do have experience printing a few Spider-Man costumes, so they're a little more familiar with what it is that cosplayers want. Unfortunately, they weren't familiar with the Spider-Gwen suit since I ordered it um, pretty soon after the comic came out, and they just didn't have a lot of experience printing it yet. So it took me a couple tries, and if you can find a place that's experienced and has done it before, that's going to save you a lot of money in the long run and a lot of time and heartache. If they offer a swatch service, even if it's like a $5 charge or something pretty small, definitely go ahead and order. The swatches are usually 8 inches by 8 inches, maybe 5 by 5, um, but I would recommend if you can, printing a little square of your pec or boob, just this general armpit down and across. For Gwen, this will cover the white, the black, and the pink, so you'll be able to tell if your colors need adjustment. And you can also use it to figure out if your measurements have lined up well. 
Since my suit has shading under the bust line, when I had my swatch printed, I realized that the bust line was way too high and I actually had to drop it a little bit. So that saved me a lot of money in that I found out ahead of time that my size was too small and I was able to fix that before printing the giant real thing. You also need to check how wide the printing is. Um, Fabric on Demand prints 58 inches across, but other services will print like 55 or 60 inches. So you just have to check because your TIFF image needs to be the right size. If it's too big, then when it gets printed, it's going to cut it off. So just make sure that you've double checked that aspect of it. Probably the most important advice that I have for selecting a printing service is to just be really specific about what it is that you want. Most of the people who work at these kind of places are really helpful and are really looking to get you exactly what you're looking for. They definitely don't want you to be disappointed and then complain and leave them a bad review. So just give them a call and let them know exactly what parts of your suit are important to you. Um, when I call them, I let them know that the hex pattern wasn't as important to me as the muscle base pattern. Because you kind of have to give and take with what's going to show up, especially with Gwen's suit since the um, contrast is so high. So they were really understanding about that and they really, I think, focused on what it is that they knew I was going to focus on. Once it's printed and it's arrived, all you have to do is sew it. So there are some materials that you're definitely going to need to sew the suit. The first one is a sewing machine. Uh, if you don't have one, try and borrow one from a friend or a parent of a friend. Um, I think some of the fabric stores that offer lessons also offer some sort of rental service where you can go and just use their machine and work on whatever you need to for some small charge, uh, but I'm not super sure. Uh, I have a Brother Series machine. It does a straight zigzag and overlocking stitch along with a bunch of other stitches that I don't really know what they do. A straight stitch will snap on you, so you definitely need a machine that at least does a zigzag stitch since it'll hold the tension for stretch fabrics much better. This is a regular sewing foot and what you're probably going to want to invest in is one of these walking feet. Uh, what it does is grabs the fabric as it sews and it's just a lot easier because stretch fabric is really slippery. Just get a pack of any stretch sewing machine needles. Most of them are pretty universal. I think Serger and Singer might sell their own but they pretty much all fit together. You'll also want a pack of just regular sewing needles since you'll need those for basting stitches and just like tiny detail work that doesn't really require a sewing machine. For thread, pick up polyester thread and not cotton thread. Cotton thread will sort of snap pretty easily. Polyester thread is much stronger. It's sometimes called all-purpose thread. I pick up the Dual Duty brand. Um, you can see on here it says that it's 100% polyester, so that's how you know. Uh, for Gwen, you only need one roll each of white and black in 500 yards we will cover it. But I do recommend getting an extra spool of each color in a smaller amount uh, just for basting. You're also going to need at least two bobbins, which are the uh, spools of thread that go in the bottom of the sewing machine. Uh, they're really, really cheap, um, but it is a necessary item. Fabric scissors are also a must. They cut so much better, and if you don't already have a pair, they're only like $12 at a maximum, and it's really, really helpful. You'll also want some pinning needles. I prefer the really thin glass ones. You're also going to need an invisible zipper. I would recommend one that's longer than 22 inches. You can always cut it to make it shorter um, and just sew a new stop in it. This one is 30 inches. I'm not going to need anything that long, but I'm a little worried that 22 might be too small. This also depends on what kind of zipper you want to sew. I prefer a straight down the back one. It's just way easier to sew, and I think it kind of looks just as good. A used zipper is more screen accurate. It's easier to get into and doesn't pull tension on all the seams as much, but it's kind of hard to sew, I think, and uh, if you don't get the measurements quite right, it'll sort of like ripple on the sides and look a little bit strange. Uh, so a straight zipper is just a lot easier. If you're doing an attached mask, then you probably want to do a zipper from your head down to the bottom of your neck and then do a separate zipper from like right above your butt up into your neck. So you'll have two that sort of meet in the middle. So those are all of the super necessary items that you're definitely going to need. And next I'm going to cover the ones that I guess I would consider optional. 
they're either going to make sewing much easier or it's going to be necessary for other elements that some spideys decide to include in their suits. The first thing I'm going to recommend is a stitch remover, which is this little sharp hook that'll take out any stitches that you stitched wrong. You can do that with scissors, it's just way easier to use this little tool, so I highly recommend it. It's also really easy to find like a mini sewing kit at Target or CVS that includes the stitch remover, a pin holder, a few pins, a few needles, and measuring tape. And it'll be like two dollars or something ridiculous and um, that's an easier way to pick up all of those materials if you don't have any of them. If you're going to sew wrist zippers, then you're going to want to find shorter invisible zippers that are the color that matches whatever part is right here. Um, probably five inches is sufficient. I think I picked up seven just in case since they're all pretty much the same price. I also recommend getting a Mark Be Gone pen. It's um, a water soluble pen that you can use to mark fabric and it washes away surprisingly easily with just cold water. And what you use it for is uh, tracing your hand when you're making the gloves. And I also use it for marking the eyes when I'm cutting out the holes in the mask. And when I'm attaching the hood, I like to line it up and pin it and then I'll like draw where it's going to go and then sew on the line and just wash it off. If you're doing uh, puff paint on the webbing yourself, then of course you're going to need puff paint. For Gwen, I couldn't find the right color in the Puff Paint brand, so I have the Slick brand, which still does the job, I think. The color that I have is Blazin' Blue, because I think the teal is a little too, like, neon and green for my print. It might match the other prints from, like, Arachnid or Spider Bite a little bit better, but for Gunhead, this color matched. If you have fabric that's pretty thin, you might want to consider buying interfacing, just for the hood to make it just a little more stiff and give it a better shape. I also use these invisible snaps to attach my mask to my hood. Um, that isn't really necessary, especially if your mask goes a little longer. My first one was kind of short, so it would poke out of my suit sometimes, so I just use these to secure it down. I think some cosplayers also use the snaps to attach the hood to the top of their mask so that it doesn't blow off all the time. But they're pretty useful for a lot of different things. Um, it's worth picking up a few just in case you decide you're going to use that technique to secure anything. So for Spider Gwen, it's a lot easier to just get flats and teal and wear them on the outside of your suit. When I bought my print in these shoes, I, uh, I couldn't find the right color in my size, so I just got these black loafers and I'm going to use the method of sewing your shoe into your suit. The way that this technique works is you separate the sole from the rest of the shoe, put the rest of the shoe inside of your suit, and then you attach the sole to the outside of the suit. This will require getting um, glue. I use barge glue to secure it on, but you can use pretty much any type of glue, like E600 glue works just fine. And then you're also going to need some extra strong thread. I use the Coats Extra Strong Upholstery thread. It's really thick and strong and it's going to be really important for the wearability of that sole on your feet because it's going to go through a lot of stress. You're also going to want one of these curved repair needles. You can find them in any repair sewing kit. It's like, I don't know, two or three dollars at a craft store. And basically what you're going to do is attach this to the bottom of your suit and then you're going to poke through the edges of the sole and sew into the fabric and really attach it all the way around that way. So yeah, thanks for watching. I hope that this was at least helpful in letting you know about how much making the suit yourself is going to cost, along with all the materials that you're going to need. If you guys have any questions, just leave them in the comments below so that everyone else can see too, in case everyone's wondering the same thing. Um, I've left in the caption a list of all the items that I've talked about and approximate prices. You can get all this stuff from either a fabric store like Joann's or on Amazon.com. So good luck everybody gathering all of your materials. I'm going to spend the next week, I think, um, sewing and uploading videos. So hopefully you guys can build this suit with me and it'll be really fun. So yeah, happy cosplaying.